What's up guys and welcome to this uh, tutorial on question 3 of the 2019 final exam. Um, in, the previous question, in the previous video we did question 2 and now we are moving along uh, to question 3, which is also called moving along. Okay, cool stuff. So, um, okay, so the position time graph for object A and B moving in a straight line in the same direction is shown below. Okay, so we have a position time graph. So something we should note is that the gradient of a position time graph gives us our velocity or our speed, right? Or it gives us our velocity. Let's keep it as velocity. Okay, so that might come in, in handy when you're answering some questions. Okay, so question 3.1.1 .1 says at the instant t equals 1 is the speed of object A greater than or less than the speed of object B. Okay, so once again we're looking at the gradients. So let's look, we go to time equals one second and we look at the gradients. So if we compare the gradient of A and the gradient of B, okay, so the gradient of B is pretty much flat, so it's pretty much zero, while the gradient of A um, is quite steep. So therefore we can say that the speed of A is greater than the speed of B, uh, let's just say then the speed of B, okay, so then the speed of B, okay, and the reason is because we know that our speed is equal to our gradient, and the gradient of A is greater than the gradient of B, okay, and we get ourselves three marks for that. Question 3.1.2, does object A and B ever reach the same speed? If so, when? Okay, so basically now we're looking for where these two things have the same gradient. Okay, so I would say pretty much at this point right here, the gradients at about t equals 4 seconds looks the same to me. Um, in the section after that, B looks greater. And in the section before that, B looks like it's less. So I would say yes, um, they do reach the same speed and that happens at four seconds okay and then question 3.1.3 says uh, which object has the greater displacement over the six seconds okay so here the important thing to note is that our displacement is equal to our change in position right so for each of these objects a and b we need to calculate the change in position so the change in position of A is going to be equal to 15 minus 0, which is 15 meters. While for B, it would be this change in position right here, which I would say is about 21, uh, 21 minus, I'd say that's about 21 minus 10, which is 11 meters. Okay, so the displacement of A is greater than the displacement of B, so the answer is object a. Okay, next we go move on to a different question. Okay, so a helicopter is flying vertically upwards at a constant speed of two meters per second when a stuntman steps out of an open door. The stuntman lands on a trampoline 4.32 seconds later. Okay, so if we had to draw out this scenario right here, we've got some kind of helicopter. Got a nice helicopter there, and we have a stuntman. The helicopter is traveling at two meters per second upwards initially, okay, and then the stuntman jumps out. So when he jumps out, his motion is going to look something like this, okay. He goes up, he's traveling at the same speed as the uh, helicopter, so he has to go up initially, reach a maximum, and then fall to the ground or the trampoline or whatever. So there's a change in height here. Um, yeah, okay, so let's see, question 3.2.1 says calculate the height of the helicopter above the trampoline as the, stu as the stuntman jumped, okay, so we want to calculate this change in height basically. Okay, so this is a classic UVAT question, I'm going to take the upwards direction as being positive, and let's write our UVAT. 
Okay, so I want to calculate the UVAT all the way until he hits the ground. So at this initial point, he has a velocity of two meters per second upwards. The final velocity is an unknown. The acceleration is minus 9,8 because we took upwards as positive. The time is 4,32 seconds and the displacement is what we want to calculate. Okay, so what equation can we use? We can use the equation S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So S equals two times four comma three two plus a half times minus nine comma eight times T, which is four comma three two all squared. And if we crunch the numbers, we get S is equal to minus 82,81 meters. Okay, so the minus sign just indicates that the displacement is equal to 82,81 meters. So the stuntman has moved down. So that uh, so the minus just tells us that the stuntman moved downwards. Okay, so that means the height, let's say the height, is equal to uh, 82,81 meters above the trampoline. Okay, cool stuff, and we get ourselves four marks for that. So question 3.2.2, calculate the velocity of the stuntman when he reaches the trampoline. Okay, so let's see what equation can we use. The simplest one would be V equals U plus AT. So I'll use 2 plus acceleration of minus 9,8 times time of 4,32. And we get our velocity is equal to minus 40,34 meters per second. Okay, so what does that negative sign indicate? It just means he's moving downwards. So our velocity is equal to 40,34 meters per second down. Okay, again, you guys can switch between either one of these two. They are the, the same thing. Um, okay, and we get ourselves five marks for that, which seems a bit generous. Okay, but anyway, question 3.2.3 .3 says, uh, draw a lip. Okay, so a stuntman lands on the trampoline. The trampoline sags 1.5 meters before launching the stuntman back into the air. Okay, so it moves down 1.5 meters. Okay, so then it says, draw a labeled free body diagram of the stuntman when the sag is greatest. Okay, so we need relative forces. Okay, so when the, when the sag is greatest, I'm gonna draw forces. When, this, uh, when the sag is the greatest, we know that after it sags, the stuntman is launched back into the air, right? So we know that this trampoline is exerting a force upwards. Okay, and we know that there's a weight as well, but the force upwards must be greater because the stuntman is launched back upwards, okay? So if we want to draw the free body diagram, it could look something like this. So a big force there, and this is force due to the trampoline. Okay, and we can say that is our weight. Okay. And the last question is at the very bottom where the sag is greatest, is the stuntman's acceleration up, downwards, or zero? Okay, so okay, so we already discussed that the force from this from this picture that I've drawn here or the free body diagram, we know that the force of the trampoline is greater than weight, right? So that we that way we know that from Newton's um, Newton's first law, or sorry, Newton's second law, we know that force tension or some of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So if we write this out, we're going to say force of tension upwards, taken up as positive. Uh, force of the trampoline minus weight equals mass times acceleration. Okay, we can divide everything by the mass, and we know that this number here is a positive number because of that constraint right there. So the acceleration must be upwards. The acceleration is positive. Okay, therefore, so the answer here, we would say 
upwards as he is launched back into the air. Or we could even say uh, as he experiences as the net force is upwards. Okay, so either one of these is correct. Um, yeah, so we get two marks for that and three marks for the free body diagram. Um, yeah, and that's basically that. We get ourselves 21 marks. So not a very difficult question. Some free marks here definitely for the five marker there. Um, but other than that, yeah, quite interesting. And we will move on to the next question in the next video. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this useful.